Okay, send up the live stream for me right now. Oh, we can take questions too? Uh, sometimes people have questions, sometimes they don't. It just depends. Hello, and welcome to Jason Cavanis Experience. I'm your host, Jason Cavanis. Our guest today is JJ. JJ, are you ready to be great today? Listen, we're, we're going to be great. We're going to be excited. We're going to be energized. And we're going to give you some tangible stuff. Jason, there's nothing worse when I do a podcast or sorry, when I listen to a podcast or go to a seminar, right, Jason? You yes. get excited, you get enthusiastic. And then what happens two days later? You're back to square one. Exactly. Right? I want to be able to give people some movement today. So that's what we're going to do for you today. Cool. JJ started his career as a magician where he grew the number one magic YouTube channel in the world with over 50 million views with over 500 views seen in over 550 countries. Realizing the art of deception wasn't his true calling, he left his bag, bag of tricks to host TV shows in Asia, run nightclubs, and then he transitioned to the States where he engages, inspires corporations and personal brands about getting their career to the next level. In 2020, after the world was put on hold, he started his own Instagram growth agency, where he helps personal brands use the power of Instagram to get influence and the attention they need to get people to like them faster, trust them faster, and buy from them faster. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Worldwide and the man with a lot of energy, JJ. What's up? That's right. We're keeping it, we're keeping it worldwide here with this Australian accent. I'm in LA. Everyone's listening globally, right? But all that matters is, hey, we're here together, and we're here to help everybody get to the next level, Jason. So, JJ, why LA? Of all the cities you could move in, why LA? You know, that's a great question. So, you know, 16 years ago, man, all I wanted to do was tell the world who I am, what I do, and how I can help people. And I was playing in the entertainment field. So, you know, 16 years later, I thought, you know, well, I came here in 2017. Why wouldn't I come to the number one capital city of the world of entertainment, Los Angeles? So, you know, came here to, to, to move and groove with the, with the people that I admire the most. JJ, so this is 2021, and from my point of view, there's still entrepreneurs out there who don't get the importance of social media. Like, you have to be on social media, I think. Why do so many entrepreneurs still not get this? Because a lot of entrepreneurs, the reason why, they just don't understand it, and that's totally fine, but I'm going to share with everybody right now, you know, you want to be able to use social media to leverage who you are and what you do and how you can help people. You know, gone are the days where you'd put a post up and you would just be between your family members. Now it's a business. Now, like, people use it. I know people in town here in LA, people make a million dollars a month just on Instagram. Like, that's it. So, like, you should be able to take 10% a 10 of that pie, even just for yourself. So, a lot of people, they just don't know how to use it effectively. So, JJ, you always hear about, you know, you need to be engaged on social media, you need engagement. What is engagement? What does that even mean? Well, you know, the thing with Insta, the thing with social media is like, you don't want to have, it's like this, right? Let's say when I used to, I used to run a nightclub, let's say a hundred, no, let's say a thousand people coming inside the nightclub, but no one was doing anything, right? They were just standing there. They weren't even drinking. They weren't partying. They weren't dancing. They weren't doing anything. And that's what a lot of people have these accounts or they have a lot of people on their email list or they have a lot of people on their on their Instagram or social media, but having a lot of followers means nothing. You want people engaging with you. You want people interacting with you. You want people actually giving you the Jason experience, right, with you. You want people doing something. So that engagement, right, of, of what people do on your social is as important as just having the numbers or just having great content. JJ, is there a certain rule out there that says you're supposed to have like a certain percentage of engagement? Like, oh, you have a thousand followers that 10% of those should be engaged? You know what, there are stats, but at the end of the day, like, you know, stats constantly change as well. Like, you know, even the biggest and the best people who have super strong followings, like, you know, these superstars, you know, their, their engagement is only sometimes one to 2%, you know, one to 2% of, of 5 million people, it's, you know, yeah, it is a little bit, but that's not that much, you know? So the stats are changing, but it's more about, you know, my job is to, when I work with clients and companies, it's like, how do we leverage your influence? Like, how do we use that in other ways? Just, you know, rather than just Instagram and extracting people for, you know, for, for, for their dollars and, and for their business. JD, what does it mean to have a brand? It means everything. That is who you are. That is, that is what you're about. That is what you believe, you know? 
and and it's all about people want to get to know you now jason you know i remember that remember now people like everyone knows who the owner of amazon is right why, why do we know that why do we care because we want to get to know the people behind the brand we want to know what he eats we want to know what he does for fun people want to get to know because people are buying people yes i'll go on amazon to buy a can of energy drinks right and i'll buy that yeah i don't need to discuss that with jeff but i want to know you know what is the richest man in the world or one of the richest men in the world do like what's his gig about you know and, and that's important for us that's why a brand is important you know it tells people who you are what you do and, and how you can help them so jd has a good point like way back in the day like no one knew who the ceo of ford motor company was or ibm we know that now when did this change it's a great question. I don't know when it changed. I don't know when that shifted, but I do know that when, whenever the shift was, people were allowed to actually express. They didn't have to put a a a certain. They didn't have to be a certain way to match a certain type. Now it's all about culture. Now it's about character. Now it's about hey, well, you know what? I have the choice of six different businesses here. Now I don't. I don't have to just go with that. I want to get to know what the owners are like. I want to actually get to know what they're, where they're all about. I want to get to know what the owner, you know, this product, what ingredients they use, because I more resonate with more natural products. So, you know, the ability now to, to be able to get to know the brand, the person behind the brand or, or what the brand's about, I think is really important for all of us. JD, so let's suppose there's a CEO out there and somehow they like ruin their brand, right? Do something bad, you know, we get bad press. How do they overcome this? How do they go from having a bad brand to a good brand? Or is that, like, is that a lost cause? Yeah, so this happened to me recently where I work with the CEO of a company and he was put in, put in a bad place where the company did something where he got into a place where he had to take the hit, right? And obviously that was more leveraged on him than actually the company. So what we did is first thing you wanna do is you don't wanna jump straight into the emotion right and try to fix everything in one hit let it be for a second nothing's going to change in the next day right after the, the the i call it the tsunami has happened then you can go in and start to build slowly and the first thing you want to do right is if you can come from an authentic place and say listen i made a mistake or i shouldn't have said this or this is what i'm going to do to fix what has happened and people can really resonate and relate to that because even if it's a big boo-boo as they say if you can come from a place of i actually am sorry or i should have done this differently people will feel that and, and they will be more likely to to uh go on the journey with you rather than you just try and pretend it didn't happen or just block it away JD, so you, you hear some people say that, you no, know, like you have someone to make a comment or LinkedIn post or YouTube post or what it case be that you should respond to everyone. But is that really realistic? Like suppose you, you're someone like, like lots of followers. Do you really have time to respond to every single person? Is that really good advice? Or what do you think about that? No, I don't, I don't think you need to, you know, that's, we'll sort of go back to the point of, you know, social media as well. I think one of the reasons why Jason and everyone's listening, why people get overwhelmed with social media is because they get told things like you got to respond to everybody. You've got to post 16 times a day. You've got to do this, this, and this, otherwise you won't make it. So to your question, no, you don't have to respond to everybody, but people who respond to you, if you can manage that, right? try to because they are humans they are real people so either there's two strategies here one you respond to every respond to a bunch of people right or two hire someone else to do that like my team does everyone that comments on my posts now eventually when it gets too crazy maybe i won't do it as much but i think it is important enough just like if you had a, a restaurant and you had 500 people coming into your restaurant every night for dinner, you're not gonna go up and say hi to every single person, but you will probably go up to come people and say, hi, welcome, thanks for coming. So it's it's one of those things. You don't have to do it for everybody, but you should still do it for some people. JD, what's your take on uh, social media platform scheduling tools like uh, SmarterQ, Buffer, Hootsuite? You think those work or you should actually like do them like um, by yourself? You know, at the beginning, I recommend like definitely get involved with the social and understand how to work and understand the best way that works for you. Then when you understand it a little bit, then you're allowed to automate, then you're allowed to leverage. But I think I feel like a lot of people that before they end up working with me, they've tried to leverage everything. Well, I'm going to automate 50 posts a month doing that. I'm going to do LinkedIn. I'm going to do this. 
And then, and then what happens? It's just all over the place and nothing actually is working. It's like, well, hang on a second. Let's figure out this slowly. Let's see what you can actually manage, right? Let's get up with a better plan so you don't have to feel like overwhelmed and you have to schedule everything in. So like, yes, I think it is important, but at the beginning, at least know what you're doing first because you may not need to schedule everything in. Maybe it can just be something that you could do three times a week and it's more consciously, what am I going to feel today or what do I want to post today? So JJ, you change the subject. You've yeah. done a lot of traveling. What's been your favorite place so far? Tokyo, Japan. Uh, yeah, that's a nice place to visit. Yeah, Tokyo. I lived there. It was just magical to me. I, I was I was in Australia at the time, and I was working as a magician. That's right, a magician. A buddy of mine was over there, and he said, "Hey, listen, Jay, if you ever want to get to Tokyo, you know, you can make some really good tips, right?" And I said, "You know what? Why not?" So I went over there and did some magic to some rest people at restaurants and, you know, made a little bit of money, but it was more about the experience, but seeing that whole culture, like Tokyo is a place that no one ever, you can't relate it to anywhere. It's different than Korea, different than Singapore, Hong Kong, Thailand. It's just a magical, magical place. Yeah. They definitely have their own unique culture. Right. So next question, what's the place you've been to that was a lot of fun, but most people were like, you went where? Like it's kind of off the wall, but you had a great time there that most people were not like probably wouldn't travel there. Yeah. Ho Chi Minh city. Vietnam. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Vietnam was like people like Vietnam, like they think it's like some kind of city with, you know, like not even a third world country, a fourth world country. Like, like, do they even have electricity? You know, some people like that. They, they, they've just, it's like this Island. Yeah. Ho Chi Minh was an amazing, amazing city. Amazing. Just food, culture, people, energy, you know, everything was really was super cheap. You know, it was just a great vibe. And I was there 2015 when it was just starting to ramp up the tourist culture. So I was there just at the edge of it. So I really got to experience it at, at the perfect time. Yeah. When I was an army, uh, we were, me and my family were South Korea for three years and people were like, you take your family to Korea? Like what type of person are you? Right? You don't care. I'm like, like so Korea is like more advanced than States was. They had like right, big screen right. TVs and stuff, the buildings, like, like key key codes to get in the doors and stuff. And they didn't even realize how advanced it was, right? Right, right. So right now, what social media platform excites you the most? You know, Instagram is exciting. Instagram, but there's this new one called Clubhouse. You know what I mean? It's actually brand new. I don't know if you heard about Clubhouse. So anyone listening right now, Clubhouse is an app where basically you go and hang out with other people and just basically either interact with them or listen in on their conversations. You have different rooms and it could be entrepreneurship, finance, leadership, love. You could start your own room, but basically it gives you the chance to be the interactive fly on the wall to other people's conversations and they can bring you up as a speaker. But the way I sort of understand it now, it's like having your own, it's like going into a conference with multiple stages and you walk in and listen in, or sometimes they invite you to the stage. So Clubhouse is very exciting, but then, you know, Instagram is my is my baby. You know, it's it's where I come alive, it's where I understand, and I, I really understood how to leverage an entrepreneur or a company's brand and message so they can literally extract either, you know, new people, new money, new opportunities from it. Yeah, actually, I've been on Clubhouse for about a month, and I actually hosted my first room the other day on um. The challenge is the non-tech founders building tech companies, right? Nice. And, and anyone pop up, it was seen this, this one guy popped up. I don't know who he was afterwards. He's like this billion, billionaire VC out of the Bay Area, right? He popped on there like, and, and talked to us, right? And stuff like that happens all the time. You never know who's going to pop up, what connection you're going to make. Yeah, it's it's amazing, man. Yeah, it's it's like, it's like, it's like they've, it's like LinkedIn was like the, the, the nightclub of everybody. And then Clubhouse like the VIP, like it, you know, it's only really good quality people at the moment because it's invite only. So yes. I don't know why I, at the moment it's really good. Let's see what happens in two months. When they open the floodgates. Yeah. 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 When everyone gets in yeah. and it becomes, you know, Twitter 2.0, right? Everyone hopefully, was hopefully, an hopefully that doesn't happen. Yeah. 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 JJ, talk the points about whether you're an entrepreneur, uh, you know, starting your own company, you know, college student, whatever you're doing, looking for a job, the points of putting yourself out there. Listen, I, you know, I, I, I can't, one of my like core things about me is like, you should be telling everybody who you are, what you do and how you can help them. And the thing is, Jason, everybody listening, I'm not expecting you to be me. I know I'm loud. I know I've got an accent. I know I'm in your face. I know I'm full of energy and life, but that doesn't mean you can't be at least knocking on people's door too. Right. And the best way to do that is by using the power of social media. It's free. It literally gives you a press of a button to tell everybody 
what you do. And you should be proud about doing that, right? And the thing is, why wouldn't you? Because you've got something to give, right? And the best way to do that is by putting stuff out every single day. If you're just consistent for 90 days and you're putting something out about your message, I promise you, you'll get some interest. Even if it's within your close circle of friends, the amount of people, the amount of clients that I tell them to do it in 30 days and after the third or fourth day, someone will message them, Jason, and go, oh my gosh, you sh I wish you, I knew this uh, two weeks ago. Like realtors are the best thing. Right. I mean, I wish I knew that you sold houses. I just saw we just went with some other dude and he sold the house. That could have been a 30 grand con for you. But because that's because you decided not to tell everybody. So I'm giving people the permission today to go, listen, for someone that teaches people, coaches people, uses tips and tools and strategies to help people get their message out, you're allowed to do it yourself. To our listeners, I highly recommend you check out JD's YouTube channel. JD is a very exciting, engaging speaker, right? I mean really good. So JD question for you, you know, a lot of people fear of public speaking is like, you know, a lot of people would rather like jump off a cliff than publicly speak, you know, and so, of course some people do because they have to do it, but they don't, you know, they're not, you can tell they're not, they're doing it right. How, how do people overcome this? This matter like practice over and over again or like, what, what's your advice? Yeah. It's a great question. So, you know, yeah, it's the number one fear in the world. The number one fear. Like I was, when I first heard that, I was like, what? People would rather jump with the sharks then stand in front of a crowd. I could literally have one microphone and a pool of sharks. And that, that is amazing to me. But to give people some, some tangible stuff here, guys, you have to understand this. You shouldn't be waiting to the final 400 person crowd or 40 person Zoom session to pro promote or, or, or show off your new brochure or company as the final straw to get out and do your things. You should be practicing every day. Like you should be. Jason, how do you become a great podcaster? You don't just get up and wait for the perfect interview. You should be talking. How do you become a great speaker? I'm speaking every day. How do you be a great salesman? Well, you're practicing how to sell. So I feel like so many people wait, Jason, until like, okay, now I have to do it. Then they get nervous the night before and they, and they freeze. It's just classic 101. Put the time into practicing public speaking. The way to do that is you can actually stand up and, and have some cue cards in front of you or actually stand up like you would be doing a presentation and actually start speaking, you know? But people just are waiting for the one time to do it and then they really realize why they're nervous because they haven't done it that much. So classic 101, be practicing every day at it and then in a month or three months, guess who's gonna improve? JJ, can you tell about your own company now? Like how, how you come to get started, your vision, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, well, you know, my company's in my company literally, you know, took a dive in in uh, in 2020. I was speaking for a living, you know, doing events, you know, hugging people, being able to touch people. We didn't have to wash our hands every 15 seconds, you know, back in the day when we used to wash it, and that was fine. But you know, now since 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 the since the crazy time we have just been in, I've literally taught other people, you know, personal brands, you know, entrepreneurs and companies how to leverage social media so they can more make more money and make more client get more clients and get more cash you know by leveraging you know the influence through social media so this is not the subject but have you ever gone bowling but i love bowling who doesn't love bowling you remember back in the day you used to go bowl like you always you always shared the same same bowling ball everyone's fingers in there you you nachos and hot dogs <laughs> Those right, days right. are long gone now, right? <laughs> right, right, dude. Yeah, man. You got to wear gloves. You know, you got to stand six feet apart. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. So who's your target demographic for your company? Is it a certain size company, a certain revenue stream, certain industry? Yeah. So so currently, you know, at the, at the beginning of when you start anything, you do everyone. Hey, Jay, I can do it. But you haven't even, I can do it. But you don't even know, I can do it, right? You take everyone, everybody, and then you realize, okay, who's not important? you know, or who I can best help. So I would say the perfect person for me is obviously like entrepreneurs who've been in the space for a, for, a, for a while, people that aren't new to social media, usually people, entrepreneurs who either hit a wall, right? And they're not getting traction anymore. You know, typically entrepreneurs who are doing, you know, mid six figures to seven figures or companies who 
don't know how to use social media at all and don't want to obviously start trying and want to leverage me and the team to help them do that because a lot of companies just know they need it they know that it's not going to make them a buck like they're not going to put in a dollar and get a dollar back straight away but it's like if they don't have any brand presence online they know it's a problem so i would say anyone listening right now that's obviously been in the game for a while that is looking to obviously get to the next level of their influence online or any companies out there, um, um, you know, me and the team are your guys. So JJ, is a social media you recommend people not to go on? Or that is it like a waste of their time? That's a great question. So I think a better way to answer that is where should you be spending your energy for your brand and message? Perfect example, I had a client of mine, right, who is a plastic surgeon here in Los Angeles, right? We had a consultation and she wanted to obviously, her bigger vision was obviously more so to get clients was just to get a little bit of fame, right? But she didn't really, she wanted a little bit more fame before clients. I said, okay, well then use TikTok, right? Because TikTok's going to get her the views, but it's not going to get her the, the you know, the, the 12 year old girls hopefully don't have the money to go in and get her work. Hopefully, done, right? hopefully not. Hopefully, maybe, maybe some of the girls in Beverly Hills, but but then we've got other clients, right? We had this uh, guy that was doing, um, he was like building, a builder guy, right? He was like, well, I heard that TikTok gets a lot of views. And I said to him, Jason, his name is Jason Joe. I said, Jason, like, that's not going to get you clientele. Like, that's going to be cool. You're the good looking builder guy, but they're not like the, the, the young people are not going to be telling their parents, you should use this guy to build your house. So what we did is we took that same energy and same message, put it on Instagram and made him to be like, now the guy that people, he gives tips every day. I'm oh, sorry. He gives tips three days a week. He's now getting booked or getting hired, right? as a builder because the demographic is different on Instagram than it is on TikTok. So JJ, what you always hear, you know, social media influencer, Instagram influencer, what is an influencer? What does that even mean? Well, an influence is someone who just has reach. So a parent has influence, right? Jason, you have influence, I have influence, but the media term influencer is someone that's typically, typically, right a you know a person of of a younger demographic what what most people think of an influencer like either a blonde girl you know a, a, sorry a girl or a young guy taking photos of themselves taking selfies like in usually the kind of like quick fame kind of place like kind of vibe that's the that's what most people what they think when they think of influencer but there's a lot of influencers out there it's just the word is sort of it's just a, a thrown away word now. It's sort of like entrepreneur a little bit, isn't it? You yes. know, I'm an entrepreneur. Well, it just sounds sexy. Everyone, I'm an entrepreneur. It's like, dude, like, uh, dude, I'm just someone that wants to get seen and heard quick and, and, and labels aren't really important to me, you know, but, but that's what an influencer is. JD, so let's suppose, suppose, suppose someone has a business out there. Yeah. They're like, I'm not doing social media. They have no, so how some by my have no Facebook, no LinkedIn or nothing. Right. And finally realized I didn't get on social media. What advice do you have someone like just starting brand new on social media, like nothing at all? Great, yeah, great question. So what I would do, and, and anyone listening right now, like I'm more than happy to give you guys a, a free strategy session as well. If you guys send me a message and say you saw me on Jason, I'll give you a free strategy session to, to help you go through this. But to give a, uh, to give a broad piece of uh, my opinion, I would first go, okay, what is our, what are we trying to achieve, right? And there's usually two answers. One, it's either to get my product or, or message to make more money or to build my brand influence, right? Now you can do both, but if your first target is like, I want to sell this or I want to be get booked as this, there is a bit of a different strategy Then rather what I would say is use social media to grow your influence because the more influence you have, the more opportunities you can go in. For example, by building your influence, you'll get more people to know you, right? Which means more trust, more likability, more sales, but then you can also leverage in to meet further people, networking, right? When you have bigger influence, you're seen as the expert in your space. When you're seen as the expert in your space, more people choose you over everybody else, right? And then bigger influence as well, you will just get opportunities when people see, wow, this guy is really, really big. Maybe he could be great for this, or maybe I should go to him for this for advice or an opportunity or bring him into my business. So, it's two questions. One, what is your goal? And two, right, you know, how do we want to get there? JJ, is this such thing as being on social media too much? Yes, 100%. Yeah. Just like 
it's sort of like, you know, Jason, take it away from social media. It's like activity, right? And I say this to my team all the time. Hey, where are we best spent? What are we doing every day, right? Income producing activities. The cash is what's going to run the business. So for us, yes, content equals conversations, which equals cash, as I say. But even for someone like me, Jason, who plays on it, I'm very careful of where is that time being spent? Because this machine in front of us is very powerful, but it also can control us if we're not careful. And the clubhouses, the LinkedIn scrolling, the Facebook groups, the Twitter, the, the TikTok, the, 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 the Snapchats, it can lure us in because Jason, what people, what these app, what these companies want is they want user activity. They want you on their app. The more watch time, the more engagement time, their stocks go higher, their investors are happy, they're happy. So you have to learn how to get on it, but then get out of it. Yeah, like for me with TikTok, I, I get caught on TikTok too much, right? Because I think it's entertaining. Not only the dance, like there's great information. Like one person I follow, like he's like a certified year psychiatrist. He puts out great information, you know, there's great stuff on right. there. Right. Now I found about Clubhouse, like, man, I don't have time to spend another hour and there's another social media app, right? But I'm on there because there's a lot of great information on there. But it's definitely like a thin line you got to follow, like you said. Yeah, it's, you know, it's one of those things. It's like you've got to be really self-conscious. You know, and, and I don't know how I've been good at this. I don't, don't ask me, but like probably two or three years ago, I wasn't as good with social. I, I, it would really draw me in and it was making me weak. You know, my productivity was very low. I felt like I was working, but I noticed like, where, why am I not doing a lot of stuff? And then I was conscious of like, I'm scrolling a lot. You know what I mean? I'm just like letting my wine mind wander. I'm mucking around on YouTube. You know, until the point of like, okay, this is this is the 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 this is the the game. I get in and I get out. Yes. So you, you answered this question a little bit earlier, but can you talk in more detail how COVID affected you and your business? Oh yeah, it affected my business a hundred percent. Like I was, I did my ironically, I was speaking on stage in Las Vegas March thirteenth, right? And ironically, I got booked as a speaker to talk about my story and stress, right? stress and the week after it all shuts down what a great gig my last gig right so literally within a snap of the fingers all my opportunities all my contracts all my confidence got cut and that was very hard for me because i didn't know my next move right and and but it was the best thing that happened to me because it really got me out to, to and maybe people listening might be in feeling the same way like i really understood like what do i actually want to do like, what do I care about? I wasn't happy before, Jason. I wasn't, I was doing it because I was told to do it because that's what I thought I was supposed to do. But then when I couldn't do that world anymore and I literally had to go, well, what makes me come alive? Now I'm on the right path. And and ironically, isn't it interesting when you, when you cannot physically do that anymore and you have to do something else and things start to work. It's like, wow, like, why didn't I let go so long ago, you know? And I think that's a lot of hard for a lot of people listening right now. It's okay that if you have to start again and there's no rule if you were in the events business before and now you literally have to go and be a singer or the other way around. If you're in the entertainment business and you have to literally go and start something else, it's okay. Like there's no rules anymore, everybody. And I think Jason, we've all understood that when now people literally have lost everything and we can understand how you feel so it's like, well, what do we do now? So for me, I had to let go. I had to start again. I had to push through. I had to feel like that's not working. That's not working. That's not working. But now what is working? And then it's like double down on that. JT, when you were doing in-person speaking engagements, when could you tell you go like be give a great performance? Like, did you always just know because you're prepared or like a, a couple of seconds to get give them the presentation? Do you feed off the energy of the crowd? Like, how do you know, okay, this is going to be a great, this is going to be a great speaking engagement by me. Yeah, man, I, I'm a big energy guy. And I know that's the word thrown out with entrepreneurs, but like you could, if you can listen to this, you can feel my energy. I'm all about people, right? So my theory is like when I walk on stage, like I know when the audience is in the palm of my hand, I can feel it. And if I, you know, it's me versus usually 300 or 500 people. That was a common gig for me. Me standing on stage, getting their attention, usually, you know, at the time when I was doing these events, at like, what am I, I'm 32 now, but I was doing this like since I was like 19, 18, people would double trip of my age. They're like, who is this Australian young guy? I would always wear nice suits, like, you know, in a nice fitted suit. What is he going to talk to me about business or like, or like stress or motivation, right? So I had to break past that problem, that roadblock 
But when you have the audience and you feel the energy of the room and you're making everyone laugh and get everyone getting comfortable, like that would, that's magic. You, you have people captivated. That's what you want. So Jay, you talked earlier about no people practicing what they're doing. Like, no, I may be wrong, but I'm guessing you just didn't, you didn't speak the first time and all magic appeared happened, right? But mm -hmm. talk about the process to build you up stuff to, your, to this point, right? Did you like speaking small crowds, Toastmasters, speaking for yourself? Like, how did you get this point? What was the process? Yeah, yeah. So I'm mean, the kind of guy, I don't have a very much a, a I don't do the, 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 I don't, what do you call it? Tippy toe into success. I like to jump into it. I'm a big believer. I just dived into the deep end. So, you, so you're, you're a hard eye person then? Yeah, I just, just jumped in and then I'll work it out. You know, obviously you drown faster than most people, but the thing is I like just getting in it and then I'll figure it out later. So for me, I know if I always put myself into positions where I had to like embrace what I was, what I was when is in front of me, I could literally learn a lot faster. And that's the way I learn. I realized that's not the way everybody else learns, but I realized that if I just did that and kept doing that, I'll learn pretty quick. And, you know, so far, 30 countries later and 17 years later, it's, it's, it's working out. And, yeah. and how many languages do you know besides English? No, just actually just one. Just one, but, okay. Ironically. Yeah, like I know a few, I like Japanese and Vietnamese and, you know, I'm Sri Lankan. I know how to like speak it a little bit, but, you know, I've realized that's, you know, funny you bring that up because I realize that, you know, they say night was it 85% of, of, of communication is just body language anyway. Right. So that means 25% is language. Everything else is like smiles and, and gestures and energy and, 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 and feeling. So the ability for me to go around the world and connect with all these people, I had to learn because I couldn't speak their native tongue. I was like, well, how do I, how do I get something from this person? How did, how do I get them to understand me? Well, obviously it can't be through, through, through words, it has to be through other ways. So I've learned how to connect with people without, you know, only learning English, you know? JJ, do you have clients all over the world or just in the United States? Yeah, I'm, I'm really fortunate globally, you know, because of my travels. So when I wanted to start my agency, I was like, well, who do I know? You know, firstly, like who's got my money, right? That Grand Cardone says, who's got my money? And, and who can I go speak to? So yeah, we're, we're, we've been in over 12 countries. I think I'm, I'm in like active clients about four right now, so. So who, who do you follow on social media? Like who, who's the people that you follow that, you know, you, you maybe not your mentors, but you, you makes you follow what they're doing. Yeah. You know, I, I really do like, you know, a lot of people probably know, obviously Grant Cardone. Like I went to his 10 X event and he's definitely got his interesting ways, but I like where his heart's at. I like where his, his ability to go, you know, the speed, the whole 10 X concept for me is, is very exciting for me because it is like, if you, 10x your goals 10x your visions think big you know so i do like where his head's at and what he does but then there's a lot of people as well like you know i like i get inspired by people like alan watts for example you know he's a philosopher and then i get inspired by people like jordan peterson he's like a clinical psychologist they just like the way these people think so the way they process information the way how they sort of explain things to me which i embrace with so it's just a vast group of people man so JJ, can you give us your social media for yourself? You're coming so people can reach out to you. Yeah, guys. So look, you know, if you're listening right now and and you guys really would love, as I said, a free free strategy session where we could literally look at your brand, look at you, look at your messaging, see where you want to go and see if there's a good fit. Check me out at JJ Live at J-A-Y-J-A-Y-L-I-V-E. And that's it. Instagram, just check that out. I've got a website as well, Ace of Spades Agency. That's my company. So AOS Agency or Ace of Spades Agency .co, .co. But Instagram is you'll be able to see all the great information and see what I do and, and see what I who I work with. And to our listener, we'll have the link to your social media on, on the show notes. You can find the show notes at www.kevinstatesallblog.com. Be sure to share this episode with your friends and across social media. So JJ, we'll come to the end of our talk. Can you give us advice or wisdom on anything you want to talk about? Yeah, I want to leave everybody with this. Hey, listen, guys, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past, right? Hey, today's your day. Today's a new start. Let's do something. You know what I mean? And if you don't know, go ask, right? There are people like Jason. There are people like me. There are people like you know people who are willing to help you. But all those excuses and all those things you tell yourself is the only person blocking you is you. So it's like, listen, you can do whatever you want now. Go out, take some action, and see what you can do. Yeah, you bring up a great point. Like some people, many people are scared of asking, right? For me personally, 
I'll make this number up a little bit, but since I've become an entrepreneur, 90% of the people I ask for help have helped me. Only 10% have either ignored me or said no, right? Or said, you know, maybe later, right? At least 90% has replied in some kind of way, right? So that's a great point. You have to ask for help, but people do want to help you. Yeah, we, and we block, but we, you know, Jason, we talk ourselves out of it, me included. Why would they help me? I'm no one. I don't have any money for them. You know who's telling us those? That's us. Who said they asked for money? Who said they wouldn't help you? Who said we aren't good enough? We are, we are telling ourselves that. So that's just like a muscle that you've got to keep going. Hang on a second. Maybe there's a way that I can ask them, you know, and that's, what's great what you're doing, Jason. And we have these conversations so people can listen in and go, you know what? I like that. What that guy said, I didn't like 90% of it, but I took one thing away <laughs> and that's all that matters for me. You know? Yes. JJ, thanks for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, man. And to our listeners, thank you for your time as well. Remember to be great every day. That's it.